As we enter a new decade, extreme eating has never been more dangerous. A mind-blowing 1.6 billion adults worldwide are now overweight. And one in four Brits are obese. And at the same time, an incredible 1.6 million people in the UK are affected by an under-eating disorder. In this brand new series of Super Size vs Super Skinny, we'll meet anorexics who've taken under-eating to the ultimate extreme. I just don't need this. It's just in the way. And we'll see how overeating can lead to an early grave. I know that if I don't lose this weight, I'm going to be dead. Plus, in a five-day stay at our all-new feeding clinic, Dr. Jessen will be pushing our polar opposites to the absolute limit to try and break their dangerous eating habits. Have you lied? I'm sorry, I can't sit here and be told I'm wrong. Don't bother me with the camera. Before it's too late. We're looking beyond what's on your plate and exploring the psychological triggers that lead to dangerous diets. It's no longer about what you're eating. It's now about what's eating you. Welcome to the brand new feeding clinic, where a super size and super skinny will be forced to confront their obsessive relationship with food in a unique five day meal swap, attempting to shock them out of their deadly diets. Tonight's residents are Julie and four times lighter, Jade. I don't eat like a pig every day. Julie, I'm not being funny, but you're 24 stone. Do you not think I know that? They're checking out of the last chance saloon and checking into the all-improved diet den, which is going to be tougher than ever. This week's super skinny is Jade Potts from the West Midlands, who thinks her body is far from perfect. When I look in the mirror, I feel quite upset, disgusted. It's not what I want to see, and I wish I could change it at the snap of a finger. How did I get here? You know, women are supposed to like their bodies and feel confident, stuff like that. I don't. I hate my body. After having a baby 18 months ago, full-time mum Jade became a food-free zone. Since I've had Jake, my appetite has just gone downhill dramatically. I pick at food, I don't like food, I don't look at food. I just have a very negative vibe towards food. When she was pregnant, she was actually radiant and she looked very healthy. But after she had Jake, the weight seemed to drop off and it was very, very noticeable. Jade may have lost her love for food, but has fallen head over heels for its replacement. I personally think that I have a great relationship with caffeine. <laughs> I love caffeine and caffeine probably loves me. <laughs> During the day, I could get through maybe 10, 11 mugs of coffee, a two litre bottle of Coke and cans on top. Luckily for Jade, bad habits are banned at our feeding clinic, which Dr Christian Jessen will be running for the next five days. OK, so dressing gown off. 23-year-old Jade has been put through a detailed medical to make sure she can tackle the task ahead. But first, Dr Christian looks at her weight. Is that it? Or lack of it. At five foot one, Jade should weigh between seven and seven and a half stone. 79 pounds, not a huge amount, is it? No. Jade is just five and a half stone and worryingly underweight. The perfect body for me would be seven stone, have curves, maybe have a pair of hips and a pair of boobs. So you are 22 inches around your middle. Just a natural womanly figure. I'm gonna go around your thigh. So you're 14 and a half. Something that I haven't got. I'm literally straight up and down. Seven and a half rounds your arm. OK. A diet free of food is giving Jade deficient results all round. You are, well, you're five stone nine. And that gives you a BMI, if we work out your height to weight, of 14.5. Now, someone your size, and you're quite petite anyway, yeah, I'd like to see you with a BMI of about 18, 19, 20, something around there. Um... How do you see yourself? Um, I see myself as a skeleton with skin. 
Really? Yeah. When you look in the mirror, that's what you see? Yeah, I think it's disgusting. Why do you think that is? I have no idea. I really don't have a clue. Don't have an idea. All right. Why are you here? I feel like it's the last straw for me, really, to put weight on. The stakes have never been higher for this young mum. Jake means the absolute world to me. If my weight does keep on dropping, you know, I could be really, really ill. I could end up in hospital, not be able to care for my little boy. Don't worry, Jade. You're not the only one in diet distress. Meet your new housemate, Julie Tregeagle. All 23 and a half stone of her, which is about four jades. I like food. I like it, so I eat it. In one sitting, I can probably eat a big bar of chocolate, crisps, sweets, other small bars of chocolate, you know, anything I can lay my hands on, basically. I personally would prefer a huge man-sized bar of chocolate than an actual man. And for her main course, single Julie, who still lives with her parents in Portsmouth, tucks into her usual supersized supper. My mum doesn't believe in small portion sizes. I absolutely adore my mum's cottage, cottage pie. It's amazing. Tend to overdo the cheese, perhaps. Mm. And let's not forget the fantastic family curry. I generally do two at a time, and there's half a pint of double cream in each one, which is not good. But it tastes good. It tastes very, very good. Which is why Julie is Dr Jesson's next guest at the feeding clinic. And it's definitely no place like home. And she could be in for a shock. A BMI over 40 is morbidly obese. Over 50 could be fatal. Your body mass is 51.5. You are at very, very high risk of death from your weight. OK, so it's serious. Yeah. Have you always been overweight? What's happened? Um, I wasn't up until I got to secondary school. But all of a sudden, it just started going on. Were you happy um, at school? No. I was bullied a lot because of my weight. It, it was a constant thing. It never stopped from the, from the day I started school to the day I left. It just made me feel like I was worthless, you know, and that's all I was. I was just this fat girl in school, and that was it. Do you think the bullying caused you to eat more? Um, I don't think so. Um, I don't... I don't... I wouldn't say I comfort eat as such. Um, I eat because I like food. There's two things what we call emotional hunger yeah. and physical hunger, and I bet you haven't felt physical hunger for a very long time. And I think, although you say you don't comfort eat, I think that there is a large amount of emotional eating with you. Yeah. Jade and Julie's weights are worlds apart, but their cravings for candy and caffeine are about to collide. Oh, yeah. Hi. 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 oh my God. I could be like a leg and a bit of a stomach. What do you weigh? I weigh 23 stone eight. Right, was five stone nine. My God, she's small. And she looks quite fragile. I didn't know an adult could be that small. My God, you're <laughs> a quarter of me. Jade and Julie have provided details of a typical week's meals, which they'll be swapping over to highlight the danger zones in their diet. So, Jade, we're going to start with you. I'm going to start with breakfast. Let's have a look. A little bit of toast. Uh, anything else? No. Let's go on to lunch. Is that it? That looks about one lunch to me. Come on, dinners. More sandwichy things, some chips, a bit of Chinese food about snacks. Crispy things, chocolatey things. Now, although that doesn't look very much, there is one huge swimming pool sized thing missing. You substitute most of your meals for caffeine, 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 caffeine. It's thought the safe amount of caffeine is 400 grams per day, which is about four cups of coffee. Jade drinks two and a half times this amount, the equivalent of 10 cups of coffee. 